Welcome to the Colibri project. I'm introducing you to advanced and wireless communications. My name is Andreas Timgiel. I'm with Hamburg University of Technology. If you talk about wireless communications, this has a long history. The communication over long distances in the past was always wireless. If you look at um, things, how you could communicate between different villages, you would do that with smoke signs. I have, and then um, we had in China, also in Europe, we had signaling towers, which were showing from via signals you could propagate messages from one end to another end. For example, um, there was the warning that the Spanish Armada was arriving to, to England. This was done by signaling towers across England. If you talk about communication systems later, telephone networks, the first ones which came up, and also the first data communication which came up, this was bound to wires. And then we had the trends in the 40s and 50s and 60s to um, free the phone from the wire again because it's much more useful to have it wireless. You can walk along, you can drive in the car, that was the first applications. You could use communication, data communication, not attached to a cable. So the first part was freeing the phone from the wire. We also thought about how to do voice communication, and then we see that this was done for few, it was a luxury good, and we came up that today we have almost voice for everybody, and we are coming to data for everybody. This is something which also is based on the wise LAN technology, also starting with the idea that we want to free the PC from the wire, the laptop from the wire to connect to the internet, and which is leading to smartphones and tablets which are all accessing the internet using wireless LAN or mobile networks. And then we have to think about what is the future, where are we going to, and we see that this will be to a large extent, wireless sensor networks, actuators, sensors, communicating. We call it the Internet of Things. What I want to show you is how rapidly these things, this um, technology changes and why it's so exciting. And that's something we see. Um, if we talk about the last 50 or 60 years, we mainly had communications with a fixed line phone. And we had something like where every household in the industrial world had a, mobile, had a fixed line phone. And that leads to something like 10, 15, 20 percent of world population had access to a fixed phone. That's what we see here. In 2001, we had the first time when we had more mobile phones worldwide than we had fixed line phones. That was a revolution, never expected. And today, if you look for 2014, we have 95 percent of world population over all countries um, equipped with a mobile phone, which means we have so many subscriptions that everyone could have one. Of course, we have some which have two but we have a penetration of 95% of world population with a mobile phone connection. The second thing which we see um, is the internet. And we see the internet is slowly, that's the red line here, slowly increasing with the number of users, and we now have something like 40% of world population has access to internet. Now that's the individuals using the internet. It's not having access, also using the internet. And we see the second trend here, that's um, the violet line, is the number of people, percentage of world population, which have a mobile broadband subscription. So we have 30% of world population today which access the internet with a mobile broadband connection. And this um, shows how rapidly it's going. It's something that over the last five years only. Also, similarly increasing is the number of smartphones. So we have from 2005 to um, the, the increase of smartphones of 5%. Now we have a quarter of the world population is equipped with a smartphone. So we see that it's really changing the world. Of course, something we'll see, we won't be able to reach much more than 95% of world population with a mobile phone, where you see how we can go ahead in the future. So going wireless, this seems all very fascinating and great, seems to be easy to do. It is not. And why, why it is, what is the problem? Why is it a challenge? It's a challenge because we have to do the radio propagation. We have to have electromagnetic signals which propagate to the environment. And the environment is bad. We have problems. We have things like, um, the, um, if you um, transmit with a simple antenna, you would transmit to all directions, meaning that um, the, the power density decreases with the surface of a sphere, meaning that the power density or the power which you can receive is decreasing with the square of the distance. And what you also see that you have a lot of um, other things in the field. You have 
um, walls in behind, you have people moving through the um, direct line of sight between transmitter and receiver, you have cars moving there, so you have a lot of problems which attenuate the signal further and further. You have other systems which interfere, you have noise, you have temperature, you have rain, you have all the problems which might lead to some bad um, radio propagation. And you also have the self-interference, meaning that if you have a reflected wave which um, interferes with your own signal, if it does a phase shift, you can cancel out your own signal. So this is difficult as a technical challenge. It's mainly um, well addressed, so we can communicate nicely with high data rates uh, wirelessly. Another thing we have to highlight and to think about is the security. The security is completely different here. If you have a, a wired connection, a wired communication, we have to tap that line. So we have to go and physically interconnect to that line. And if you do an optical line, you cannot even see any magnetic field outside this cable, so you really have to attach to this cable to the next um, router. If you do wireless communication, you communicate, you basically broadcast your signal to the environment. That's also what you want. And on the other side, anyone else can listen. If you have a highly directive antenna in the next door building, you can see the signals which you transmit. And that means you have to have an increased security um, that you do not show the, the information to others and others cannot interfere to you or intercept, or cannot access your network just from remote. So the idea if wireless LAN, I'm also telling already about something on the first course, is only to, uh, um, to exchange the physical layer, just the, the cable, by wireless link. And if you want to do that, you have to also think about how to access the bus or the medium. So in the physical layer, you have a different means on how to share this medium, then you would need to do with a wireless medium. So that's why we have the MAC layer and the physical layer exchanged, and we keep all the rest of the protocol stack the same as with Ethernet. And then we think about the um, wireless LAN evolution. The first systems were introduced in 97. The first compatible version was there in 1999, offering something like 1 megabit, 2 megabit services, and uh, this 802.11 from IEEE won the race against um, the more sophisticated, more complicated European system, which is called Hyperlan. Hyperlan then made some of this part of Hyperlan was later introduced in the evolution of wireless LAN. And constantly over the years, wireless LAN evolved from 1 megabit, we came to 11 megabit with 811B, we come to data rates of 54 megabits um, with 811G, we now have uh, N with 100 megabit, and we are looking for AC, which is being introduced, coming up to 1 gigabit per second. So you see, this is constantly evolving, always doing the race and the match against um, the fixed line, where the Ethernet also increases. So it's always something like an order of magnitude in between. We are increasing the quality of service. Um, there's um, increased um, security in the wireless line and also more and more methods to be energy efficient. If you look on the different worlds, so we have on one world, we have the world of the, um, of the computer networks, where we replace the Ethernet by a wireless connection. On the other side, we have the mobile phone networks. And I already mentioned that we had this, um, we had a um, uh, different generation of mobile phones. Uh, we had first systems in the 50s and 40s and 50s and 60s, which were having high um, radiation, uh, um, high towers with um, high transmission power. Um, you had to know which tower you're connected to, then you can call this tower, and then um, it was connected to the car which was driving. It was not really, it was bulky systems, only car bound um, possible. Then um, there was a Bell Lab um, patent in 1972, which was proposing to do a cellular concept. That's something which you can see on the slide here, on the, on the side. Um, the idea was that we have frequency which we reuse. So you do smaller cells, you um, find a scheme to do a handover from one cell to another cell automatically. You use different frequencies in the neighbor cell, and some cells later you can reuse the same frequency. With this, it was possible to do much smaller devices. The battery um, consumption was much lower because you had to transmit lower distances, and the systems became cheaper. And there are examples like the CNETs in Germany or the NMT in the Scandinavian countries, which was probably the most advanced analog telephone system. Second generation was going digital, getting better quality of service. Mainly it was also um, in Europe being driven to um, have a European system, which you could use in all European states. Um, therefore, this GSM system was introduced since 1991. And this one, due to the high number of users in, the, in Europe, 
and the compatibility and the uh, opportunity to roam. This was a system which uh, made it global um, penetration in the end. Then, after we came to the third generation, uh, where we introduced uh, multimedia services, also worldwide coverage was one of the main ideas, 384 kilobits up to 2 megabits of data rate. And um, now we are deploying, the, or we, ha we are in the process of finally deploying the rest of the fourth generation um, LTE is, um, in service since 2009. YMX since 2007 is giving you really much more data rates. So we talk about um, 100 megabit of data rate. And we are now in the process after this has been um, finally standardized and it's being implemented. We are now defining and standardizing the first generation where we look for gigabit of, of data rate. We look for machine to machine type communication. And we think about applications which have a very, very low delay, which we call tactile internet, where you could remote control devices over the internet. Um, something like surgery with a robot or production process, which you can monitor and, uh, and, and um, service or um, apply through the distance of the internet. The course which we are offering is um, then giving you more details on the wireless basics. We will then go into the wireless LAN, um, explain how this works, give you an overview of how we can communicate using the wireless LAN. We go to the mobile network, the evolution of mobile networks. We finally go to the Internet of Things and the sensor networks. And in an advanced course, we will go in much more detail for the Internet of Things. And now we want to see if you have um, time to work and understand what we have told you. And finally, these are our references. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>